So this driver is found dead on the side of the road the other day. Ooh. He was chaining up, and I guess he had a heart attack. Wow. Where is this at? Um, I don't in in the country somewhere. I didn't really look. I I, oh. I just briefly read the article, and but I, it it made me start thinking. Look, it's tough to get truckers to start exercising. Mm-hmm. You know, like yeah. anytime fitness. You know, get a membership and. Because, you know, to be honest with you, when I was a driver, I used to carry my weights, but you really had to be dedicated to working out because when you drive all day long, and whether, whether you have 11 hours or 10 hours of driving, your, your day's longer. You know what I mean? Your day's just long. And so by the time you get somewhere, you're hungry or you're tired. So the last thing on your mind is, you know, I just did 500 miles. I think I'll go for a five-mile walk and get my exercise in. I mean, it's tough. Yeah, it is. So so I was thinking, here's the message, okay? I'm not going to harp on getting your ass in shape because, honestly, we... I was out of shape on the road. It's... Again, it's not easy. Here's what I would... Here's the advice I would give drivers. Get at least on schedule to be getting checked out by a doctor. And I don't mean your annual or some drivers get a two-year, some drivers get a one-year. Just because you got a two-year physical doesn't mean you're in good shape. Just because you got a one-year physical doesn't. What, what I would tell you, and because you, it took you to get me to go to the doctor and start, you know, getting blood work done and just making sure. Right. I mean, you got to, I mean, I don't want to sound it bad about it, but you're going all the time driving. Your family don't want to see you gone permanently. So the best thing that you can do is at least go and get checked up so that when you're finally done driving, you could spend that time with your family retiring and doing the stuff that you want to do. You're not going to get there if you don't stay healthy enough to do it. Well, I would also say that I mean, this is going to sound weird, but cholesterol medicine, which probably half the country's on, has probably extended many lives. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it has. Well, now, this driver was found dead from chaining up. He probably, you know, he, you know, chaining up is not easy. Chains are not light. So he's getting, he gets out, he's chaining up, he's probably sweating, which initiated the heart attack. Okay. Well, back in the day, before cholesterol medicine really got widespread, heart attacks, like you were, you were hearing about people just keeling over all the time. I don't mean just truckers. So my advice would be start going to the doctor at least once or twice a year. Get your blood work. All they do is take your blood work and they'll tell you about your cholesterol. They'll tell you if you have diabetes. They'll tell you if you have all this stuff, right? And so you really could at least stay healthier even if you're not working out by at least going to the doctor and having him or her manage. Yeah. There you go. Manage. That's a good word. Manage your cholesterol, right? Blood pressure medicine, diabetes medicine, because the last thing you need is to not be, and that's really what the killer is with most adult men is most men don't want to go to the doctor. And They're afraid. Well, I mean, so was I. I was afraid. Well, you know? I mean, here's one thing also for men to know. What's that? Well, one thing that you are always afraid of is the, quote, the man check, right? Right. They don't have to do it the way they used to do it. They could do it by blood now. And as long as your markers stay within that, that level, you'll never have to go through that Right. Man check. You know, so there's there's really nothing to be physically scared about when it comes to getting your, your like you said, your annual or, if need be, your your checkups every six months. It's better to do that. And, and just to add, that's an exit, not an entrance. So you're right. The man check, you know, is not something I want Ever, <laughs> you know, no, I don't think any man really wants that oh check. There's probably a couple of good buddies, but anyways, listen. So, look, here, here's really the bottom line. 
get yourself to a doctor. Get the blood. And the other thing that they should do after you're like 50, start, literally start getting what? A colonoscopy. Well, yeah, you need to get your, an endoscope. They check your stomach. They, they basically check both ends and make sure that everything's digesting properly. How many, how many people have been saved because they decided to get a colonoscopy and then they found out that they had like precancerous polyps inside there and they just remove them and, and you're good to go for like five. That's what happened to me. The first time I got a colonoscopy, okay, about seven, eight years ago, the doctor said we had to remove some precancerous polyps. Now, think about this. If I would have been like my grandfather or, or other, other, you know, men that I knew and never got checked out, right? Guess what? I, I could have cancer, right. uh, col- colon cancer by now and, and be on my way to a graveyard. Mm-hmm. Be, be, and that was like seven, eight years ago that they said I had precancerous polyps, which means by now I probably would have colon cancer. So therefore, it was just a small little checkup, which probably saved my life, you know. Right. I mean, honestly, I know a lot of guys don't want to think of the process, but when you're dealing with doctors, that's what they do all day. They don't look at you in that manner anymore. You're just, they want to get their job done. But here's the thing, being a truck driver where all you're doing is sitting, you're not on any kind of um, healthy diet, you're getting a lot of um, bad food going through you, you're, you're half the time you're not even doing your digestion right, you're, a lot of them, your cholesterol, all this different stuff that you're talking about, you're not exercising, there's high probability that that could be inside of you and you really should just get it checked. So wrapping this little segment up, drivers, I was the last guy on the road that would ever want to go see a doctor. Ruth Ann convinced me and now I go every year. It's not a big deal. They draw blood once a year and they say, okay, you're good. But, but you know what? It's better to catch something early than when it's too late. And I don't mean catch it late. I mean, catch it too late. Right. Okay. So anyways, moving on, Ruth Ann, um, let's take a quick break. If you're a driver looking for a new trucking job, check out NCI. NCI offers the following. New Kenworth T680s, competitive wages, solo team and students welcome, plus a full benefit package for you and your family. Check them out today at 888-311-7076. That's 888-7076. And tell them TalkCDL sent you. Hey drivers, are you sick of watching the other drivers bypass the way station while you are held up going through yourself? Well, download DriveWise today at www.drivewise.com. That's D R I V E W Y Z E.com and start bypassing the scales yourself. If you're a small carrier, an owner-operator, or even a big fleet looking for something better, check out DriveWise today. And remember, there's no equipment, no transponders needed when you're using DriveWise. Check them out for a free download at www.drivewyze.com. Drivers, if you're looking for a local, home, everyday driving job, apply with Carter Lumber today. They have positions for Class A and Class B local drivers. They can take experienced drivers, students, and non-CDL drivers. With over 160 locations, chances are they have a position for you. So go to carterlumber.com forward slash talk CDL and apply today. Again, that's carterlumber.com forward slash talk CDL. Thank you. Truck Park. 
Parking Club is a network of instantly reservable daily and monthly truck parking locations throughout the U.S. Truck Parking Club helps connect truckers to truck parking locations throughout the U.S. via truckparkingclub.com. Our networks is made up of property owners that have locations adequate for truck parking to list on the platform. This includes trucking companies, storage companies, CDL schools, trailer leasing companies, real estate investors, truck parking operators, and more. Go to truckparkingclub.com today. Okay, we're back. So, cute little story. Maybe cute, maybe not to you. Um, Trucker serving six months for stealing a load of Mike's hard lemonade. Now, it sounds comical, blah, blah, blah. So here's, here's really what it comes down to. And this is really not what I want to talk about. Guy steals a load. I guess he had a CDL. Stole the whole truck and trailer. Took it to Brooklyn. Of course, they found it. You know, of course, it was cleaned out, obviously. And they, but they caught him. They knew who it was. He got, a, he got six months in prison. Again, the reason that I wanted to bring this up is because, okay, this guy's caught. He's doing prison. Yep, blah, blah, blah. It's not real big news. But what about the guy that was supposed to, uh, that, that, you know, parked that truck? What about the guy that was in charge of the truck? What about the company driver or whoever had that truck and trailer and he was on his off time and he left? Now, and sometimes they, they're stupid enough to leave the keys in it. It's true, very much. You're looking at me like, not really. No, I've read many stories no, where... I'm just saying I, I, I'm surprised, that's all. Yeah, well, I'm just saying, like, what happens is, you know, the driver now wakes up the next morning, right? And he, and he has to now do what? Call his dispatcher and say, my load's been stolen. My truck and trailer's been stolen. Now... I know a lot of people probably aren't aware of this, but you and I both know that guy most likely will either be terminated or he will be having a really, really hard time getting a job from here on out for the next couple of years. Oh, yeah. And any kind of uh, theft of freight is, is a serious, serious uh, thing that happens when when with the driver when the company wants to look at employing them because they don't know there's too many of those cases where it was a conspiracy you know they conspired to to have that freight sold or stolen by a third party that they knew of and they kind of worked together on it and then there's the ones like like this guy it happened without his knowledge and now he's getting the phone call from from the police or or he's got to make that phone call or whatever how however it can you know transpired there is now i've got to deal with that it's not good do you remember the movie casino where robert de niro fired the um i don't know the guy was like in on the board meetings or whatever his his nephew and he even said well, he's i know he's not a bright guy and de niro was like he, he when he fired him he said he said that's that's three times this month. So what happened was they were getting ripped off. And he said, look, you're either in on it or you're too stupid to know someone's stealing from you. But either way, you're fired. You're fired. Well, that's how that's how safety directors look at mm-hmm. when you when you have a truck and trailer stolen or just a load stolen. OK, for, you're in on it, even though you're not in on it. They're thinking this guy's in on it. He's right. either, he's either in on it or he's a, a dumbass. And either way, we don't want this guy because he's a liability. So that's ex- I'm just giving everybody the point of view from a safety point. Mm-hmm. And the first thing they're thinking, the first thing they are thinking about, especially if you haven't been there like long, if you if you haven't been there for but three to six months or a month or two, I guarantee you, you're you're fired. You're out of there. Right. You haven't yet. You you haven't built up that reputation with the company as what kind of person you are yet to really, for them to know he had nothing to do with it. But like you said, if you're gonna have your freight stolen or your tractor or anything like that, well, where'd you park it? How did you leave it? You know, there's so many different conditions that they think of of you being responsible 
responsible enough to take care of that that truck and that trailer. It's no different than leaving your house and leaving the door wide open for someone to walk in and take things. You know, you take precautions on protecting everything. 100% agree. Um, so anyway, so look, if you are parking your truck and trailer and like I, we see people all the time when they're home for the weekend or every other week and they, they're just parking in like a lot that's not even, you know, nobody really owns. Or no some, safety or anything. Yes, maybe somebody owns it, but exactly. There's no lighting there. There's no nothing. And if you come home and you have a load, okay, I'm going to tell you what I used to do. You remember what I used to do in Pottsville, Pennsylvania? Yes. I used to, there was a, like a, um, like grand, a wall. Yeah, like a, a, a shale wall from the old railroad bed. And that wall was probably, I'm going to say that wall was at least 75 feet high. It was a cliff, like. Yeah, it was pretty. pretty right. And so. And long. And if I didn't have a wall, I would find, if I was parking in a lot, I would find a pole. And I would back my trailer all the way up to it to where I'm just about touching it, if not touching it. And therefore, it doesn't matter if you cut a lock off, you aren't getting in my trailer. Right. You couldn't get the doors open. Right. And, and so then I would also, if, if I was leaving the tractor there, like if you were coming to pick me up, and we were going to leave the truck and trailer there, I would literally back up and I would put pressure on the fifth. I would make it so hard that there's no way. The only way you're going to take this is if you smash the truck and hotwire it. That's, that's it. There's only one way you're taking my truck. And so that would be my advice. If you're leaving the trailer there, pin lock it. Okay, put a, pin, a lock on the pin. But back it up to something. Don't just put it in a lot. Back it up to something to where there's no way for them to get in it. Right. I mean, at least it's a good argument if if something does happen. Say, whatever reason, they're going to take the doors off. You know, if they're going to go to that extreme, but you show that you had it, you know, backed up to a pole or something like that to make it where it, those doors wouldn't have normally opened. At least you have a good argument saying, hey, I did every precaution I could have done. That has nothing. I did everything I could have done to protect that freight. Yeah. I, I 100% doubt they'll take the doors hey, off. I don't there's know. A, that's a <laughs> lot of work in front of people. You know, there's, I'm not, I don't, I'm not saying that I wouldn't put it past somebody to do something that arrogant, but most place, most people want the easy break in. They mm-hmm. don't, you know, they want to, they, what you would call like smash and grab. They want to get in, get out and go. Right. Or like th- what happened here. Just, Hey, s- see to me when somebody could just jump in a truck and just take the whole thing, I'm telling you, I'll bet you the keys were left in it and who knows if he was in on it, but I could assure you He's, he's screwed for a job. So I just, oh, yeah. I wanted to bring that up. That's something. Uh, moving on. Moving on. Moving on. So listen real quick. There, uh, I looked up, I seen in a little article, it said Tennessee gets rid of speed limiters, or speed limits on I-81 that are split speeds. You know what I mean? And I remember when I was a driver, Ohio used to be a split speed. Michigan uh, used to be a split speed. And I think they said there's like eight. Now, I looked it up. I don't know for sure, but, you know, there's at least eight states. California, they say, is the most dangerous because there a lot of their speed differences from truck to car, truck to trailer versus car, might be 50, up to words of 15 miles an hour difference, which means a truck is like a rolling roadblock. It's a very unsafe thing. But what is interesting about Tennessee, they cited the reason that they are going to make on 81, on I-81, cars were 65, trucks were 55. Now they're going to make them both 70. So even cars are getting jacked up. But they cited a study, a, a road study of safety, and they actually, I guess, believed in this study that's saying it is unsafe for a state to have, you know, a, a different speed for different vehicles, which hmm. I agree 100%. Yeah, I do too. So I looked it up. It looks like California, Idaho, Montana, Oregon, Washington, Arkansas, Indiana, Michigan are all splits. They all do have some level of tractor trailer 
is can't go as fast as a car because of what we call the split speed limit states. Hmm. I wonder if that's going to help, you know, the rest, what Tennessee doing, if the rest of the states will end up doing that. Mm -hmm. And if it would also help with the FMCSA making decisions on not by having the tractors, you know, how the the big debate right now is having them go to the speed limiters, um, having them lower, so much lower than the car. I wonder if the study that Tennessee did will help drivers with that type of you mean other states mm-hmm. that's see that's exactly what i was thinking when i seen that i'm like you know i'm gonna, I'm gonna bring this on because you you know what's funny is you would think that they would all catch on especially if there's an actual study being done with numbers and statistics now i would like to i would love to see that study myself to see you know, what is the accident ratio between truck and trailer, especially rear-end accidents of, you know, cars and hitting tractor trailers in the rear end because of the slower speed limits? Mm-hmm. No, I think that would be, I definitely think it would be something good to have and for them to share with the other states and, and the FMCSA too. So uh, moving on. Moving on. So we're just rolling along here. You know, did you have a couple of shout outs? Did you have a couple of those? Okay, no, you didn't have the title. So next week we'll we'll start the shout outs from the show. Um I just wanted to mention also about the truck show coming up in Louisville. We're hoping to see everybody. We've given out a lot of VIP tickets. We still have a few left. So if you're a driver, again, write to Ruth Ann, R U T H A N N at talkcdl.com or Troy at talkcdl.com and just go ahead and let us know how many tickets you need. You have to go online. We'll give you a, a, a link. You go online and you register your ticket and then you have to click on it again and register your each guest that's coming. The VIP tickets get you in the show but they also get you in all the concerts that are at the show. It's a value of $99 and they're free to you drivers but we don't have a million left. So if you know you need some tickets, write to us, and we will be very happy to hand those tickets out. And also, please visit us at our booth. Do you have the booth number with him? 66105. Six, 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 so come see us at the Louisville Truck Show. Talk CDL is at 66105. Sit down and get on the mic with us for a few minutes. We're going to actually have one of those, a corner booth, so we're going to have nice, a nice different way of being able to be seen. So... Um, also, another thing that, we, w- that we're going to try and do with while we're there in Louisville is I want to go to ask um, questions to the FMCSA, and you have a person that w- would like to answer these questions for us. So what I'd like to do is ask everybody that would like to have a question answered, something that's, that's bothering them that they're not fully understanding send us that question so that we can ask and find out what the actual answer is to get any confusion that you might have, whether it be hours of service, whether it be your personal time. Can a, can a, a driver carry? Yeah, so know? many different things. Yeah. And, and sometimes they can be confusing. So if you have a question, send it to us so that we can get it asked and, and the correct answer given to you. Perfect. Thank you very much. Moving on. Moving on. Moving on. So uh, real quick, uh, check this out. Found this really cool little website. Um, it has the steepest potential fines for CDL drivers by state. Pretty cool. By state? By state. Like which <laughs> state? which state is the toughest on truckers and the potential size of like a speeding fine or something like what? that. Yeah, and so I, I just got the top 10, which I thought would be really, really cool. So out of the top 10, I'm just going to, I'll start with the lowest. Okay. Okay. Potential. Now, this is for CDL speeding tickets. Number 10 would be Utah, and their ticket could be upwards of $500. Um, Hawaii, California also could be $500. Now, Maryland could be upwards of five hundred and thirty dollars. Quick question. Go ahead. Does it does it give like 
a, a speed range. It just says speeding. No, okay. No. Right. no, what it says is here's the max speeding ticket you can get per state. Okay. So as a CDL driver, this has nothing to do with um, civilian drivers. Okay. Connecticut, 560 is their highest you can get, it depending on the cop. He's like, you know what? I'm going to give this guy the, the – I'm going to give him the whole Monty. Um, Iowa, $625 is the highest that you can get there. Hmm. Now, we jump. Nevada and Colorado, $1,000 for a speeding ticket, upwards of. Hmm. That's a that's a smack in the wallet if you yeah. get a thought. But it is a smack in the wallet. But it don't stop there. I I saved the best for last. You know what's funny though, before I move on with this? I would have thought California was the big daddy. Yeah, I kinda that's you that's why I had asked you, does it give a range? Because I really would have expected California to be higher. No, California max speed they're saying their top speeding for a CDL driver is five hundred dollars. This is what, according to TrafficTickets.com. So if you guys want to look it up, look up TrafficTickets.com. You ready for the top two? Yeah. Okay. These are tied at one and two for a max ticket of 2500 bucks for speeding. Wow. That's a killer. Is the state of Arizona... And you ready? Hmm. Illinois. Illinois? Yep. Arizona and Illinois have top speeding tickets for truckers, 2500 bucks. And the, um, the biggest range is Arizona because zero to 2500 And Illinois is a minimum of 75 to twenty five hundred dollars. So if a cop wants to be lenient, he can write you a ticket. That's funny though. How how uh, they'll they have they're in charge of saying no. I'm not going to give you. I'm not going to write you up. See, I've got another list I want to give you real quick. If a cop doesn't give you a warning and he says I I'm going to write you a speeding ticket. There's another list called. Highest low end fines, meaning if you're a trucker, you get a t and you're speeding in these particular states, and they say you're getting a ticket. There's a minimum they have to give you. Like a cop can't just say, "Okay, I'm going to write you a speeding ticket, but I'm not going to charge you any more than ten dollars or something like that." Right? These states have a minimum. Washington. Their minimum, if you get a ticket, they have to give you at least a minimum of a hundred and eight dollar ticket. Now listen. So that would be like if you had a higher speed and the and it would have been three hundred dollars, they can say, Okay, well I'm kinda of cut the speed down. Instead of you doing twelve over, you're doing eight over and that makes it a hundred and okay. Mm -hmm. And remember, remember that rule? It's called masking. You guys look that up. Where a cop is not supposed to reduce a trucker's ticket. Mm -hmm. and, and, and a judge is not supposed to reduce it either. So if they give you one, they're not supposed to give you a break because you're supposed to be a professional. See, it's when, the truth. When you first said it, which I don't want to get way off a subject, but I'm, I'm forgetful, so I'll end up forgetting what I wanted to say. You know how sometimes they'll say, I'm not going to give you this speeding ticket, but I'm going to write you up for something else. And they write you up for something that is really equivalently just as bad. Like, I'm going to write you up for a seatbelt or I'm going to write you up for something else. You know what I mean? I've seen... Where they don't they do not do the speeding because you don't want to be get that on your license, but they'll give you something else. Yeah. Well, here's... Now that you bring that up, it's interesting because I've seen drivers get like... They could have got a 15 over, but the cop said, I'm going to give you less points. I'm going to give you a, a careless. And, I'm, and, and, the, and the guy told me, yeah, the cop told me I won't get as many points. He's just going to give me a careless or inattentive driving. I'm like, that's the, one of the worst safety j tickets you can get. Right, right. So, you, you know, when they, sometimes they're trying to do you a favor and they screw you. 
Yeah, because yeah. they don't really realize it's a cop that doesn't, that's not in the industry and long enough to know that that's worse for a driver than give me my 12 over. <laughs> oh, okay, so let me give you these numbers. Okay. So, so again, the, the, these tickets are called the highest low end fines, meaning if you get a speeding ticket, they got to give you the, their minimum number. So, Washington, their minimum ticket is 108 bucks. Tennessee is 109 bucks. Colorado is $115. Oregon is $115. Then it jumps up. Utah and Indiana, their minimum ticket they have to give you is $150. Ohio jumps up. Their minimum is $175. Um, Texas jumps up to $185. If you get a speeding ticket, this is what they got to give you. Alabama jumps up to $190. Connecticut, odd number, got to give you at least $198. Um... Hawaii, not many of you guys are going to get one there, but Hawaii has to give you a minimum of $200. Florida is number two. I was surprised. If you get a speeding ticket here in Florida, they have to write you up for a minimum of $219, probably plus court costs. You know, this is all plus court costs. And then California is the lowest minimum. If you get a ticket in California, you're getting at least $230 ticket, and that is the minimum ticket prices and you guys can confirm that on traffic tickets.com it's interesting yeah it really was so moving on moving on moving on yeah actually you know what that's pretty much what i have this week what do you have and and, and guys you're going to get this this podcast before the show so again write to us for those tickets and we'll get you those tickets ruth and you had something that you want you had mentioned to me earlier what is it it is um, the road check. The We're going to have a... Um, Some of the items they're going to be looking for. Right. The road check inspections, that's going to take place in May, May 14th to 16th. They actually are... When I was reading this, I was kind of like really surprised at what they're going to be looking at. Not to the point where what the items are, but the extent that they're going to go. So the CVSA is which is the Commercial Vehicle Safety Alliance. They are having, they're the ones that do the road check inspections, but they are pushing for the inspectors to now do certain things that they've never done before. Like what? Well, I'm going to read part of the article. Okay. And because it's, it's extremely interesting. So they said, every year the Industry Law Enforcement Alliance works to come up with two focus areas. This year consensus, especially on the industry side, emerged around the FMCSA's drug and alcohol clearinghouse database for positive test results and tractor protection valve, two hot button issues. So they're going to have the tractor protection valve and the clearinghouse positive results. They said... That normally, when they go and they're doing these inspections, they just do their inspections. They, I guess the drivers will get like on-the-spot drug testing. If they see that the driver has, um, maybe they, they feel as though that the driver could have done um, any form of drugs or alcohol, like if they found something in the tractor or something like that, they'll do on-the-spot testing. Well, now... They're actually going to make the make the the law enforcement officer get the driver's CDL, run it into the clearinghouse to make sure that they're not on suspension from it. Well, see, I, I'm glad you brought that up because it's interesting that this coming November, okay, what they're doing now is. The old way was a driver fails or refuses a drug screen, then he's got to do the SAP program, right? And so what they would do is they would make the guy ineligible until he um, you know, went through the SAP program. Now they're going to suspend their license because, and here's the reason why, a lot of these trucking companies, right, are just hiring the driver whether he completed SAP or not. So now they're going to make it really hard for the company because now the company has to literally, when they pull the MVR, they're going to see this guy don't even have a license. He is suspended until his 
his his SAP program is fully completed. And therefore, it's going to be really hard. The trucking companies are going to get huge fines, but the driver... If he if he fails or refuses a drug screen starting November, his license is automatically suspended, taken. Wow. That, that's it. Yeah. So and, and and really, it's because they're trying to crack down on if this guy is actually in the clearinghouse as a violator, as, you know, as a violation versus, you know, not the no violation. That's that's kind of going with this too. Yeah. It says that they've seen a lot of drivers becoming prohibited in that clearinghouse, and that a lot of it's because of marijuana use. They said that um, increasing numbers of states legalizing marijuana um, because of that, they want to make an awareness that if you're using marijuana on weekends or days off, even if it's legal in your state, drivers are popping positive during tests required by their employers, or if they're driving for an owner operator or something like that. And they said anything, even cannabis-related, should throw up red flags for drivers as there are a number of well-documented cases of drivers failing drug tests for marijuana without ever using it. But the CBD stuff that they're taking, like certain gummies or certain things like that for pain, are popping them. Right, because none of no, even though the, a lot of the gummies and the CBD oils, they advertise that as 100%, you know, um, TH-free. You know, mm-hmm. there's no THC in it. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what? The problem is they can't guarantee that. And so it's just a little tiny bit. We, we've read about different drivers that, that uh, failed the drug screen, and they weren't smoking weed, but they were doing the CBD oil. Right. So I, the advice is, guys, for real, stay away from all that crap because you are going to get burned as someone that failed a drug screen if you get caught. So really, bottom line, uh, especially this year with the... the uh, um, road, uh, this, the inspections coming up, watch it because they're looking now for clearinghouse violators Exactly, and they're going to be drug testing people mm-hmm. at, th- at this. I'm surprised though, the way that works, but I guess being that, you know, when it comes to the consortiums and the drug screening that's already mandated by the FMCSA and everybody in the industry, I guess they can they, I guess they can do a drug screen on you on the side of the road, which is pretty horrible. But anyways, guys, be careful. Ruthanne, do you have anything else besides the word of the day? Let's move on. Nope, that's all I got is my word. You got your word? I do. I heard the word. <laughs> I heard the word. No, I heard, I was, when I was walking by, I heard it, and I was like, wow, that's going to be an interesting word. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Let's hear it, Ruthanne. You ready for it? I'm ready. Go for it. Tohu bohu. <laughs> I'm going to turn it up. Go ahead. Tohu bohu. Tohu bohu. Tohu bohu. Yeah. Interesting word. And it, I'm not even going to try to guess. It's It can't be from the United States. No, it is Hebrew. Hebrew. Yeah. It, it, its origin is Hebrew, but they're unknown exactly when it came about in like what century or anything like that. But what does it mean? A state of chaos, utter confusion. Oh, I like that. Isn't that cool? Because the word sounds like chaos. Yeah. Tohu boohu. Bohu boo. Boho. Bohu. Tohu boho? Yeah. T T O H U B O H U. So it's Tohu Bohu. Yeah, well, next time you walk into the terminal or truck stop and it looks and it's like all packed, go, This is this is nothing but Tohu Boohoo. <laughs> They're gonna look at you thinking like, what the heck did he just make up? Yeah, I'm just gonna <laughs> say this guy's definitely weird. Ruth Ann, we're out of here. Peace. Peace. Praise the Lord.